These early legacy engines are really easy to pull because they still have the mounts attached to them that the factory used to install the engine. There's one on the front, on the driver's side next to the alternator, and one on the, on the passenger side in the rear. To un uninstall it, all you need to do is disconnect everything attached to the engine. Make sure you're labeling everything, it'll help you out later on. But all you need to do is disconnect the wiring. There are two big connectors on the driver's side, and then you're gonna have power steering, potentially air conditioning, an accelerator cable, and cruise control if your car had it. But other than that, jack up the transmission, bring the engine out. I'm not gonna make a video about specifically pulling the engine, just because there's a lot of resources like that already on YouTube. Now on to wiring. This part of the job, this part of the entire swap, I think is the most intimidating for me and for just about everybody I've read about who've done this. And if you take your time, it's all going to be okay. At least uh, at this point I'm recording this before I even touched it, so I'm hoping that this is still true when I'm done. But what I've read and then people I've talked to are currently and actively doing a swap also have said that the wiring job is not very bad as long as you are methodical and mark off every connection that you want to do. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I don't think I'm going to show every single step because it will change depending on what car you have. If you have an OBD2, it's going to be a little bit different. For this section, all you got to do is just have some basic hand tools um, to be able to pull things off, pull panels off, um, pull wires out, maybe some scissors. These are actually shears, I think, but I got my garage sale and they look nasty, so I like them. Um, and then something to um, label things with. And then I'm actually also going to have these yellow guide for things that are really, really important. It's unnecessary, but I don't think I'll regret it. And then obviously you like screwdrivers and you know crap like that. I'm actually going to have all my tools, but I mean this is probably all you need. Come on, Subaru, why'd you have to do it? Why did you have to make it so tight? Alright, so I got the panel off, and uh, I'm just going to give you a couple uh, tips about what I just learned. Um, there's a couple very obvious um, bolts on the top that you need to take out. Um, there's actually a ton of them that I was not expecting. Um, you have uh, several down here in the panel, so once you get the top off, you gotta reach down in there and try to reach those. Um, there are two in the door right here. You can only, you can access them basically by opening the door open. And then um, actually the mud flap is attached with two bolts. Unfortunately, both of them rusted out and the nuts behind them were messed up, so I ended up having to cut um, that out. Now that uh, we've got the engine bay basically disconnected and everything, now we have to actually get the entire dash off. So this is going to be, I think this is actually the most difficult portion. And this will be a difficult portion for me because I actually don't know what any of these things are connected to. So in the engine bay I relatively know what things are hooked up to, but in here it's just a mass.